If George Washington, the first president of the United States, lived today, the thing that killed him could likely have been easily treated with a few pills. And he's not alone. There are many in history that died from things that we now just take for granted. But today we're gonna to go over five famous people in history that if they lived today, would have been able to continue to write their story. The first is Jane Austen, the famous author who wrote the books like Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Emma, and others. Now for the guys out there, she's the reason that your movie nights turned into this. <laughs> Jane Austen died in 1817 at the age of 41 from what is believed to have been something called Addison's disease. This is a condition where your adrenal glands don't produce enough of the hormones cortisol and aldosterone. These hormones play key roles in helping, among other things, with your metabolism and blood pressure. When you don't have enough cortisol and aldosterone, it can lead to symptoms like extreme fatigue, weight loss, and decreased appetite, darkening of your skin, low blood pressure and fainting, salt cravings, low blood sugar, muscle or joint pains, and irritability. In letters that Jane Austen sent in the last year of her life, she complained of symptoms like weakness, back pain, stomach upset, faintness, and skin discoloration. In more severe cases, you can develop what we call an Addisonian crisis, or acute adrenal failure. This is when these hormones stop altogether. This can cause severe weakness, confusion, severe abdominal pain, vomiting and diarrhea, leading to dehydration, as well as decreased consciousness, and eventually death if this isn't treated. This very well may be what killed Jane Austen, but luckily in our day, we can treat it by giving some steroids either by mouth or IV. Addison's disease is fairly easily diagnosed through some simple blood work which your doctor can order. Unfortunately for those diehard Jane Austen fans out there, these tests were not available in time for her to finish that last novel. The next person in history is none other than the 20th president of the United States, James Garfield. He was assassinated in 1881, but it wasn't the assassin's bullet that killed him. It was actually an infection that was caused by doctors who were treating him that didn't wash their hands or instruments before trying to remove the bullet from his back. After the surgery attempt, his wounds became infected and he survived for another 11 weeks as they tried to treat the infections. Without the use of modern antibiotics, they weren't able to treat them and he succumbed to the wounds. Now infections after operations can still happen. Now it's estimated that two to 4% of patients undergoing an operation get an infection, but luckily we have antibiotics. That in the majority of cases can treat these infections. Modern practices of instrument sterilization, operation field sterilization, and the use of sterile gloves have significantly decreased this risk. If these practices were available in 1881, James Garfield's presidency may have lasted longer than six months. Our next person is Wilbur Wright of the famous Wright brothers, the first men to fly. Wilbur died at the age of 45 in 1912 from typhoid fever, a very common infection at the time. Typhoid fever is caused from the bacteria Salmonella typhi. It's caused by ingestion of contaminated food and water or close contact with someone who has the disease. Now it presents with symptoms like high fever, headaches, stomach pain, and rashes. But if it progresses, it can lead to an enlarged liver and spleen, intestinal bleeding, shock, and even death. Luckily for most of the world, this isn't a condition that we see of much anymore. However, in less developed parts of the world, this still is a problem, with over 200,000 deaths worldwide per year. If it's treated quickly with antibiotics, most patients recover just fine. And with clean drinking water and proper sanitation, this is a disease that can largely be eliminated. However, if you're traveling to a less developed area, you can protect yourself a little better by getting the vaccine for yellow fever. Unfortunately for Wilbur, none of these treatments were available at the time, and after battling the disease for over a month, he passed away. Maybe for the next guy we're going to talk about, we shouldn't put him on the same level of admiration as the others we have discussed today, but it's still pretty interesting. This is the infamous Vladimir Lenin. Infamous is, is when you're more than famous. This was the leader of the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia in the early 1900s and was responsible for the deaths of over 3 million people. He died in 1924 according to his death certificate of a stroke. But historians have more recently come to the opinion that he died from end stages of syphilis. Syphilis is a bacterial infection that is spread by sexual contact. It usually starts out as a small, painless sore, usually in the genital region, but often can go unnoticed, especially in women. If you catch it early, you can treat it easy with a simple dose of penicillin, but if you don't, it can progress. A few weeks after the sore, you may develop a rash that can cover your whole body. Now this rash can come and go for up to a year. Now the biggest problem with syphilis is that it can go dormant and may not cause any symptoms for years. But then up to 30% of people can then develop what we call tertiary syphilis. This is when it starts to invade the rest of the body, causing damage to the brain, nerves, eyes, heart and blood vessels, the liver, bones and joints, and in the likely cause of Vladimir Lenin, eventually cause death. We can find syphilis fairly easily through some simple blood work and can avoid it even easier by safe practices. Obviously in Lenin's case, these things weren't available. 
It's interesting to think though, that after all the attempts on his life, it may have been a Russian prostitute who ended up killing him. Now, the last one that we're gonna talk about is the founding father of the United States, our first president, George Washington. Washington died quite quickly at the age of 67. He was otherwise healthy, but after riding out on a cold, wet day and staying in his wet clothes, he awoke that night feeling very sick and stating that he couldn't talk or breathe. They summoned his physicians and did the only thing they knew how to do at the time, they bled him. This is a practice of making a cut in the vein to let what they considered excess blood from his body. Over the next eight hours, they did that a total of five times, releasing what they estimate up to 40% of his blood volume. He did treatments of garlic and different agents, inhaling steam, using a salve made of dried beetles, and even resorted to an enema. But none of this was going to work. He knew it was his end, and he spoke his last word, saying this, I am just going. Have me decently buried, and do not let my body be put into the vault less than three days after I am dead. Then, do you understand me? Tis well. There have been a lot of speculation over the years on what exactly have caused his death, and of course, there's no way to know for sure. But the most recent thoughts have proposed the theory that he died from a condition called epiglottitis. This is when the epiglottis, the flap of tissue that covers your airway when you swallow, gets swollen and infected, and if it goes untreated, can lead to cutting off your airway and suffocation. This is a relatively uncommon disease now with the advent of childhood vaccinations, but it still can happen. Symptoms in children can include fever, severe sore throat, an abnormal high-pitched sound when breathing in that we call strider, difficult and painful swallowing, drooling, anxious, restless behavior, and feeling better when sitting up or leaning forward. In adults, the symptoms are fairly similar and are characterized by severe sore throat, fever, muffled or hoarse voice, that abnormal high-pitched sound when breathing, difficulty breathing and swallowing as well as drooling. This is a medical emergency, and if you think you or somebody that you are with is having these symptoms, they need to get to the emergency room immediately. The best treatment for epiglottitis is antibiotics, but depending on the severity can include emergency airway support like intubation, or even inserting a needle into the trachea to allow breathing. We no longer recommend draining 40% of your blood as they tried with George Washington. Although sometimes I think when we send you to the lab, it may feel like that's what we're trying to do. With our modern emergency care, we most likely would have been able to treat Mr. Washington without any difficulty. Hopefully you've enjoyed looking back at these fascinating characters in history as much as I have. I thought it was super interesting to see some of the simple things that we're able to treat now that were so dangerous in the past. And doesn't it make you wonder what kind of things that we suffer from today that in 50 years, we'll be making another video saying, remember when people died of this? I just think it's pretty cool. Hopefully you did too. Now, if you enjoy this kind of content and would like me to do more of it, let me know in the comments below. We would sure love to hear from you. And with that, we just want to thank you for spending this time with us here at Family Med. We appreciate you taking this journey with us and we hope to see you in the next video.